So, I've actually been looking forward to this. I've had a lot of work lately for a major festival, so eight days constant work is apparently fine. Uh, and this this kind of just is reminding me of a kind of like sitcom kind of style of like delivery of lines, and it just made me feel like, hey, you know, this will be fun and casual, like. So this time I'm actually going to say all of the boxes instead of just speeding through them so people can get what's going on. Mornings. Should I have a voices? Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. Now if it was me, I would let them have five more minutes, but fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny, tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves on one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> yeah, this is just me assembling furniture as me reading it, speed reading the manual. That's always like a diagram and going, yeah, 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 I get it. Throwing it into one corner, doing it, and then putting everything on backwards. I then go, why the fuck are the doors not going on this cabinet? Oh, I've literally put everything on backwards, I thought, because it's a rectangle. It's pretty obvious, but I actually fucked up where I put the grooved surfaces and shit, so... Yeah, that's on brand. No one's put a chair on and then made the whole frame backwards, which you can actually do. <laughs> Ikea, man. So are you excited for the cookout today? Decided to beef up on my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Eh. I, I wanted an option that, like, says what cookout, because I actually forgot. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, <laughs> I think we can consider it a success. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? People. I end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Me. <laughs> Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better guess. We better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up for a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run for a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates, huh? Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs open, over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. No, I don't know what I'm doing. And you brought veggies. I don't know. I haven't developed a voice for this person. Just think he's annoying. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Did you get that we're Christian? <laughs> oh, that's a great shining reference. <laughs> then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Why don't you just have one kid called Jesus at this point, or Jesus? Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's a woman from the bar! Shit. she doing here? How could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Joseph pecks her on her cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What, you'll have to... <laughs> Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. It's kind of weird how they're all blonde, but she's not, like, Mary, this, like, none of the kids got her hair. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Captain, and his daughter, Amanda. 
I cheek your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Amanda, I love her. Nice to uh meet you, Mary, for the first time. <laughs> Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> it's all my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Ha ha ha, my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please. I don't I think their marriage is breaking down, but like I'm I'm new here, so <laughs> But please you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Hey Captain, have you met Brian yet? Who? Wife of Brian. Hey Brian, come over here and say Oh god. <laughs> A man in a loud Hawaiian shirt jogs up to me. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I should be more like Waluigi. Hey, uh. Brian, this is Captain. He just moved into the neighborhood. Hello. Well, pleased to meet you. Put her there. Brian pulls me into a handshake, engulfing my hand in a vice like grip. I let out a small squeak after my hand has been ground to dust. Not much of a handshake guy, huh? Guess I'm more of a hugger. Which house did you move into? The ranch style one in the cul-de-sac. Oh, the one that's just like mine, but smaller. Oh, this guy's a cunt. <laughs> that kind of hurts. Is he trying to one-up me? My instinctive dad competitiveness kicks into gear. I'm happy there. Got no worries about his size as long as me and my daughter are happy. Hmm, well put. Oh, let me introduce you to my daughter. Everyone has children. Ha <laughs> ha, my daughter's cooler than yours. A kid peeks out from behind Brian. This is Daisy. Hello. Hi, what grade are you in? Fifth grade. We're actually trying to get her to skip sixth grade, not to brag, but she's pretty smart. This guy's like every parent that I deal with at kindergarten. My kid's super intelligent. They should skip like 12 grades and get just put into university at 7. And you're like, no offense, ma'am. Your child is not actually capable of reading. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not to brag, that's exactly what bragging is, yes. Amanda's smart too. Amanda. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Well, I'll be around the party if you if you feel like saying hey later. You got it. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around to try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick us some deviled eggs. I like deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins parting them with baked goods. I don't want to have no make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Dad. <laughs> oh, I got to talk about weather. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Don't abandon me. Ah! Oh! Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista? Yeah, the kind of like awkward but okay, nice guy. Oh, dang! <laughs> it's Robert Fuck. <laughs> that guy who tried to one up me. Isn't that the guy who was trying to was throwing me? <laughs> How do these guys all know each other? Like, I'm not being funny, like, this seems like a real mix. Like, guy who works at coffee shop, random goth Vlad guy over here, guy I hooked up with in bar. <laughs> Isn't that a man's teacher? Like, what the fuck? Wait, just... Oh, hey, I know Craig. Seriously, everyone we've met just happens to know each other and they're like, Maybe I shouldn't have slept with that guy. Wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. 
I mean, I don't want to talk to, oh, like, I talked to Robert, but he's hanging out with Brian. I don't like Joseph or Damien, really. Burger time. <laughs> Let's go talk to Craig. Oh, yeah, there's, like, that way I'm talking to the most amount of people, therefore I can make it's optimized, and the chances of making friend, friends is better. <laughs> Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist and the text box got bigger, so we know. <laughs> Social and to have a place. And to try and take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context. Man and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leaves in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. Had resistance training go the other day. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you tiny bro? Craig grabs over his arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. They're so worth it. Is it? Okay. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves him around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How are you settling in? Almost done. Still a few odds and ends to take care of before I really call myself settled. But I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Miranda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Captain, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. How do you know? Oh, Craig, where you gone? Craig teleports away. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They are all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Oh... She's, drew, she's drawn in a different art style to her dad a little bit, so it makes it a little weird. Like, the line work is... <laughs> the hairstyle. Mm. Well, I mean, they're going to be different people, but, like... She just seems to have different, like, style to her eyes than every other character. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head... <laughs> Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm, no. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Ha, ah, hey Captain, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita, Carmen Sita. I thought I said that wrong. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. How's Balrog doing? I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yep, I know where you live. Still going to get me that overdue turn, turn paper. Ha <laughs> ha, great seeing you. <laughs> Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me, I'm very proud. <laughs> Definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Oh, you actually don't have a daughter. You're like the only person. Hugo looks around the party, he must finally spot him because his eyes go white. Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? He's called Ernest Hemingway, really? It's like the most horribly like, but like just call him Ernest. Like that's how you do a tribute properly. <laughs> Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. 
As he Ernest across the way, he casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and flicks it into the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse moi. Ah, oh, hey Craig, you're back. <laughs> no one's leaving me alone with anyone. I said no. <laughs> Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Then he burned down half the yard. <laughs> oh god, the teachers. Like this, this the fairly strict teacher's kid is always like the big asshole. That's hilarious. At the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. I remember my, uh, I remember a garden party where people said, oh yeah, my child would never do drugs. And it's like, actually, he's actually very often caught with drugs. And we're like, oh yes, but I would raise him so well. He's such a great child. And you're like, mm, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, and the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread out onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. Hugo walks back over to us, <laughs> practically dragging his probable cause child behind him. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. I'm raising fucking Mark Echo over here. <laughs> Hello. And this looks away. So he's literally wearing Mark Echo's outfit from under pressure if I'm remembering correctly. What was that called? Mark Eku's getting up context on contents under pressure. He kinda looks like he's wearing the outfit. <laughs> I can't remember though. That that was a long time ago, so Hugo nudges him impatiently. Dwang. Hey. Nice to meet you. What grade are you in? Does it matter? You have a shit moustache sir. Ernest, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Did they animate an eye roll? Uh, yeah, good for you. Can I go now and tie the toy to old dude to blame my generation for the failing economy? Fucking boomers. <laughs> Ouch. Ernest, oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. I mean, that combination, jeez. <laughs> Stripes with spots and a bow tie. What are you doing? The pants don't match. I'm sorry, <laughs> Vega. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was something. He seems nice. <laughs> Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's really having a really rough time. I feel sorry for you because you seem like together with your life and the shit and you have to deal with this little pig of a son. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad and he resents me for it. Really? Cool dad, you have like 16 shades of brown in your outfit alone. <laughs> I feel, feel like, you know, you have many leather bound books. <laughs> I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, they're about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are there any of us cool dads? I mean, you're wearing a crown that your daughter made, so is it even possible to be a cool dad? I'm looking at two pretty cool dads here, and Hugo's fucking trying. And I think I'm pretty chill. I'm cool as a cucumber. See, that's that right there. You can't say that. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. <laughs> but for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I don't know. <laughs> Man, you're really twisting my melon. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our faith to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. <laughs> as much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. 
Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. I mean, like, like, these guys seem to be pretty cool. Like, Hugo maybe just needs to update his wardrobe so that he's not wearing his teacher gear all the fucking time. <laughs> like, but, you know... Hearing these guys talk about this makes you think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when that happens. Don't let us eat up your time, Captain. Go meet some other people. We're fucking sick of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I don't want to talk to Brian. This might be awkward talking to Rob. <laughs> Uh, the Joseph and this Damien, I, thought, oh, I want the hamburger. Burger time! Without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? <laughs> While you were out parenting, I was busy studying the grill. <laughs> He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after the other, the dads take notice in the crowd around Joseph admire his masterful technique. You probably don't didn't know this, Captain, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. <laughs> He's ungrilling. Fuck off, Brian! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> this dad simulator has dad jokes in it. What a surprise. <laughs> I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't... Shut... Don't you start, Craig. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Shut up, man! <laughs> Robert, you're supposed to be cool. <laughs> we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> exactly, Amanda. Help me. I'm drowning. I'm drowning in dad jokes. All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. I'm being murdered live on stream. <laughs> Fucking. Ah! Amanda groans. We grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked burgers. Bees chuggers. Man, it's so wild how all of these dads live in the same cul-de-sac. We're so suburban. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. It totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. You're just a single dad. I'm just a single dad. Craig's just a single dad. Joseph's marriage is fucking shit. Why don't we just, like, eject women, return to monk? <laughs> We're happy to have you here, then, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add us a little dad book? Dad book? Really? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other on it. So if, you're ever, if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the BBQ goes smooth, smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight with between Carmen Siege and the Weird Twins. I think they wanted her soul. <laughs> no offense, they kind of look like KKK members. Uh... <laughs> But then why would they invite all the like non-white people to their barbecue? Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger. I felt like I was at a networking event. Wish I could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Truckers. I'm gonna get LinkedIn notifications out of this, I just know it. You know, I think it's nice that people want to connect with you. 
Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how the media works. <laughs> I value my right to privacy, Amanda. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. This is where the cult appears, right? Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. I have no control over you, do I, child? Oh, you are 18, though, so... That okay, motherfucker? <laughs> of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Of course. Call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Okay, do you have any plans tonight? I, uh... My plans are kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... <laughs> work on some stuff. See how long I can sleep for a party. See how long I can sleep for. Kiddo, I am tapped out. But the sun hasn't even gone down yet. I still have to sleep to catch up on from when you were a baby. <laughs> Just let me be. Just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later, finger guns. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. Hey, she has a car too. Or maybe it's my car. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin is, Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real <laughs> nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time, and I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? <coughs> Wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon, unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. <laughs> Check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not out. I really know I was sparking my, sparking my anxiety, but it possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? <laughs> I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Dwang. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why don't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops, guess I didn't see those. Starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when they go off to school, are you? Mm. 
I was scared. You weren't responding, and it was just it was just like when your mom. I have to stop myself from tearing up. <laughs> oh, Dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. It really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Yeah, seriously. We we like <laughs> have a dead wife slash mom, and you know you just gonna disappear without telling me where the fuck you are. <laughs> And they're like, not answer, so I'm like, oh shit, it's happening again. Fatal car accident or whatever, thanks. Be a little more sensitive, bitch. <laughs> like, Alright, I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to my... Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go, you go off to school, are you? Definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She wanders into the kitchen. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. <laughs> I wouldn't do it again. Pops, really? I'm not granddad. Well trust you to make good choices. I'm sorry for freaking out. You're an adult now, I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Team Swagwash? Yeah, Team Swagwash. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? I love eggs. You know it's sprinkles with cheese on? Pop up. You are not my daughter. <laughs> Already did. Bless you. Scarfs down the eggs and the time it takes me to wash the pan. <laughs> I'm off to school, smell you later. <laughs> what are you, Gary Oak? <laughs> One more thing before you go. Wow. What's that book? Social media platform. Wait, what? What's a social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. <laughs> Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. I, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on Dadbook, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about dad shit. Alright, Pops, go fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, you are most likely to Netflix and grill. <laughs> Coin collection! Torment my children with dad puns. Sink into blissful oblivion. Sleep. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Netflix and grill, baby. <laughs> you have one thing to take with you on a desert island. What would it be? My grill. The boss shaker of salt. Don't get that. Cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. A boat. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. <laughs> what are your turn ons? Strong dad arms. Are we just in a universe where everyone is just like, okay, like, fine. Maybe we are. Like, everyone's just chill with this shit, and that's that's good. But, like, what are your turn-ons? I mean, it's dad book. We're talking about dad shit. Why would we be talking about it? It's not like it's a date book. I'm just confused. <laughs> Tennis shoes with long white socks. Street smarts. Top-tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. I mean, that's good to have, that's good to have, that's good to have. Strong arms in general are fun. Uh, a well manicured lawn. I, I don't know, Street Smarts. What did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals. Salty boat captain. <laughs> Why specifically a salty boat captain? Like, he's full of salt, like he's always on tilt, like what? <laughs> <laughs> the president of space? Pro skater who is also an astronaut. I mean, I like silly answers. I don't get what, why there's so many sailor comments. Like, what's your favorite movie? Sure, anything on Laserdisc. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Old comedies that haven't aged well. No. War. 
Whatever will make me cry. Where's the horror or western option? Sean Connery's fine. I don't really like war documentaries, they're depressing. Again, ideal date is dad book. Like, we're talking about dad shit. Like, it's not dating. It's not a dating site. So why is it asking me all of these? <laughs> Being emotionally vulnerable. Arson. Trying to geocache but getting completely lost. Eating a healthy dinner. Doing a puzzle. Napping. Arson. <laughs> what, what do you never leave home without? Uh, these two. <laughs> a sensible car. My sick vape. Like that. Just like, yeah, okay, these two people know. <laughs> also know. A cool knife. My low self esteem. I frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home. Sometimes. Frequently, sometimes. Like, what? Cool knife. Spent a lot of time thinking about conspiracy. How proud I am of my child. I do in this game. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. <laughs> Again, big grill shit going on here. Is that, just, is that like the Joseph path? If we pick grills, we just hang out with Joseph. Like, when I can get... Okay, that's pretty, yeah. And this one, potential ends of the world. I think these two. And occasionally hilarious conspiracy theories, because I'm like, how? I do like a grill, but I don't have one. That's why I want to go to live in New Zealand. I can have a big old grill. Man, that'd be amazing. Ah, uh, coffee. Profile. Now, I probably chose a load of random bullshit, so that probably means we'll get the bad ending, but I, I haven't looked up a guide for this. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. <laughs> you can message people, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. And it gives me a hug. Go get them, dad. I'm really confused on everything here. <laughs> dad Manda. <laughs> oh, my daughter's amazing. She just puts a fake mustache on so that she can talk to me about being a dad. A dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. <laughs> I'm delighted to see you signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. What are you doing on Dad Book? Uh, to be honest, I want to chat to this guy, this guy, this guy. Maybe get to know these guys. I don't really like him, but I feel bad for him. Dad Manda. Shouldn't have blown her cover. I think Brian's an asshole. Like, you know, he's got soft features like he's a nice guy, but he's actually a one-upping piece of shit. <laughs> like, you know, like, straight away I'm like, no, fuck you, man. My kid's better than yours. Like, go away. Maybe, you know, you find out that he's actually a good guy, but, like, the, the, the opening gambit was not great. Talk to my bro, Craig. On a Friday night, you are most likely to get one last... Yeah. <laughs> a sub six minute mile. Hey, these options weren't available for me. <laughs> energy gel. I tried energy gel. It did fucking nothing. <laughs> My mile time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Oh, dude. I'm confused because they prefaced it about talking about fatherhood and then, like, your daughter's just like, yeah, go go chat up other men. And you're just like, wait, do you just, like, know my sexuality? Like, am I out? Am I not? Like, what? <laughs> like, she, it's good my, it's good my friend's, like, Hey, bro. Bro, my man, that's definitely hang soon. Maybe it might be a little different from our old weekend long vendors, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy. 
That's why I'm chatting to him, because it's like, apparently I know him, so. We exchange a couple small messages and he logs off to prep for the game. What game? I forget what he does. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on. Is she at school? Yo, yeah, Amanda Panna. Oh, Amanda Panna. Oh, and she's crossed over around my manga. She seems to be making some sort of art piece, but she looks sad. What's up? Puffy? Don't cry. Don't cry, child. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I got sad because I realized that dogs are too often killed off in movies to elicit emotional reactions from the audience instead of being given them the respect. Oh, yeah, I totally get you. Latest thing for me was horror movies where they think it for the. To make the character evil, we're gonna kill off cats, right? Look, they hang cats from their roof because they're evil. Lords of Chaos and the new Evil Dead did that. And then another movie I watched recently did that. And I was like, fuck off, I don't like this. Like, I don't, I don't think cats deserve that. And a lot of people are like, it's fine killing cats. And you're like, fuck you. <laughs> Obviously people in real life aren't, but in the movies. Like, I don't like that shit, it's not right. Sure, that's all you're so upset about? You have to tell me what's actually wrong. Dogs deserve better than this. Every time a dog gets introduced in a movie, I get nervous because nine times out of ten, that dog's gonna die by the end. Yeah, and Jason goes to Manhattan, they kind of just bury that lead and he somehow just shows up in Manhattan with them. That's a whole fucking thing. Oh, and in uh, Pale Rider, they fucking kill a dog, and I was like, those bastards. Bastards. I can watch a movie where people die and be unfazed, but the moment a dog dies, I'm out. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Sad dog death movies are, take up a whole genre. There are too many. Dog exploitation. Don't even get me about cat exploitation. But seriously, you, know, you could talk to me about anything, right? Yeah, that's why I'm talking about sad dog stuff with you. Okay. Just remember it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And if it was earnest, I'll beat the shit out of him for you. <laughs> <laughs> Only what's best for you. This is my listening shotgun. That's all. <laughs> alright, alright. Jeez, don't make me cry again. What you're working on. Just a collage for class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our ghouls. Are uh, you crying about the future? Yeah, that's a barren fucking wasteland if I've seen one. <laughs> Take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. Mostly dogs. Yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you brought bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then I saw him hit a ball toward me and I just ran off the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up. Yes. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. <laughs> so does that mean you don't want to go? Or... Amanda gets up, looks me dead in the eye, determined. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. That's just, you're 18, you can't be scared of softballs. It's not even really like a scary sport. It's no contact really except for the ball, so I need to have a baseball bat to hit the scary ball away. She'd be really good at this actually. Take the short drive out to the softball field for a kid's softball game, it's pretty packed. Oh if we see Brian, you're absolutely wrecking that child, I don't care. <laughs> like we are beating up that kid. So when do the kids start crying? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay. But I don't see some kids cry. I'm going to be pretty disappointed. <laughs> What's this metal child I have? <laughs> for nostalgia purposes, of course, not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out on the field. I see Craig... He has river strapped to his chest as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume. <laughs> Why is their mascot a pancake? Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's the Maple Bay Flapjacks against the Pine <laughs> Ocelots. Ocelots are cool. Go Flapjacks. 
choke up on the bat, Miranda. Yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard despite their name. <laughs> but yelling is fun. Give it a shot, it's cathartic. What's important is that you're having fun. What are you willing to sacrifice to win? <laughs> that is the most backhanded shit. Go friendship and kindness. Daddy, could you just kick it up a notch? Throw some spice on that papaya. Sure thing, honey. I believe in you, Miranda. What you <laughs> the fuck's Miranda? Oh, is that Craig's kid? Obviously, River's not playing. She's like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's trained his team pretty well. I assume he's really good with kids. Cake stand Craig is good with children. What the fuck? It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and no one else has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, let it go. You're one with the wind and snow. Let what go? I'm fine. This is... This isn't maladaptive coping. The the opposing team is up to bat. They hit a fly ball on out into center field. I actually like playing rounders and softball the first few times I tried them in the UK. It's not a popular sport, but I, I kind of like it. It's just not enough for me to actually go out and play it. And it's not exactly popular here either, so... The tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses her glove and hits her straight in the face. C is a completely justifiable fear. It's literally just getting hit in the face. Craig makes a beeline, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. Man, it's strange to think about how this was a guy who once backflipped off of a roof and into a pool while shotgunning a beer. He's so responsible. The game resumes until the girl calms down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team. But all sorts seem to have given up by this point. I see one elf feeling like eating fistfuls of grass. <laughs> Better on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no! I close my eyes and brace for impact. Dead. Dark Souls font. <laughs> I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Wow, you're like the Matrix or some shit. You save moi. I caught the ball, Dad, I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm so proud of you, kiddo. <laughs> the game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Great gerb, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig. He's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man. Thanks. We've been working hard, and it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all my girls. Speaking of which, which have you met Briar and Hazel? Whoa. They're like... Are they twins? They look like twins. That's cool. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. They look cool. <laughs> hey, Amanda, look how cool they are. You guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins. Yeah, which one of you is the evil one? I'm gonna say, like, the one on the left here with the backwards cap on and the open shirt is the Dante, and the buttoned up one over here is the Virgil. <laughs> He's on. <laughs> yeah, it's a me, the rebellious one, you mean. She's the Dante. He's. Did she? She's a Virgil, it's like... Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff, and when people get mad, I tell them I'm Briar. <laughs> yeah. 
one. <laughs> we will talk about this later. <laughs> River is so fucking dumb. She's just like, I want to go home and poop everywhere. Captain Bro. Oh, Captain Bro. <laughs> Commas are important. Captain Bro. I want to be known as Captain Bro. I just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just saying one of the mums jumps into the conversation. Oh, fucking humans. <laughs> oh, she's called Janet. For some reason, the, word, the name Janet just, like, makes me think, wow, you were born to be an old lady. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. I don't know if I can. Nonsense, the girls won't want sort of celebration we have without a fearless leader. Dude, I'm trying to hang out with my bro. This mom is laying it on thick. Yeah. A man and I shared the look. Alright, alright, is it cool if my bro comes along? Mum that looks slightly put out but covers it up with a smile. Bros before hoes, Janet. Know your fucking place. <laughs> like, <laughs> Thirsty's Pizza sounds like the worst name for a pizza place. What? What? It's a real place. <laughs> and it is. I thought she was like taking the piss out of Janet, who was thirsty as fuck. <laughs> like. <laughs> Goo -goo eyeing it. Like, I know, like, I know Craig's pretty ripped and he's got cool kids, but holy fucking shit, put Janet, put it back in your pants. I'm enjoying this way too much. Endless stream of girls in softball gear pile out of a minivan, because apparently, like, if you're below a certain age, you're a woman, and if you're above a certain age, you're more likely to be a man <laughs> in this universe, like, only dads, or predominantly only dads, then if you're like a child, you're predominantly gonna be like a daughter and not a son. What the fuck? Do, do they change gender as they grow up? What the fuck? <laughs> like, it's a horrible gender ratio thing going on in this place. It's real weird. We've met like two sons and like two wives, or like mature adult women. What the hell? Anyway, uh, softball gear, actually called First Tease Pizza. Amanda, <laughs> you're great. That's a solid joke. Where are we going, Janet? First Tease Pizza? <laughs> like, reminds me of that awful pizza we put in our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold whole pies in half and then put taco foods <laughs> inside? One of my friends used to do that, but with like, Donna kebabs. He get a pizza. He put the kebab meat on like the pizza, then roll it up and eat it like a burrito. And to this day, it makes me feel uncomfortable. God, that guy's gonna die of a stroke. <laughs> he used to eat buckets of KFC on his own too. Uh, remember how he used to just fold? Yeah, yeah, I read that. Ah, pizzacos. I would never forget. How did we survive? <laughs> Our bodies were younger back then, more elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste we put inside of us. The good old days. The kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. The man and I jump on a couple of slices of mediocre pizza. Hey, give me a pizza of that. <laughs> I'm glad someone made that joke. No! <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm just kidding, I'm strictly eating salad here. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Dad, she just looks sad. A different mum walks up to us talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. <laughs> Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me how great you are. I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps that I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Daniel left. Everyone's a single parent, what the fuck? Divorce rates are skyrocketing. I'm glad to know that they have a strong, ripped male role model in their lives. <laughs> Amanda and I look at each other again. Craig gets it from all angles, huh? Craig smiles sheepishly, goatishly. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> 
Craig holds his fist up for a fist bump from the mom I went in. <laughs> from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Tag team with Amanda. Smokescreen Martha. Gaslight Martha. <laughs> To be fair, this is how I handle getting hit on by chicks at work. I'm like, cool, bro. <laughs> like, it's it's real. Tag team. I give Amanda another knowing look as she hits me back with a nod. She understands. Amanda puts a hand to her stomach and looks at me with puppy dog eyes. Dad, I don't feel so good. I think I ate too much pizza. Ah, oh, I thought we were helping him out. Oh no, sweetie, you're not going to projectile vomit everywhere, are you? Yeah, I think I'm going to projectile vomit everywhere right now. <laughs> Martha's, Martha's handled enough vomit to not be scared of that. Back it up, Martha. <laughs> I was about to say, you're in the splash zone. I drank a lot of orange juice this morning and it's feeling pretty acidic. You'll be fine. And she should be worried. Look, this con is going sideways. Should have known that a mom of all people would know the fake puke scam. Uh, well, I guess it went away, and I'm fine now. Nothing's wrong. She turns her back on me to talk to Craig. So I'm taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover. Yeah, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course. But I could always use help watching after everyone tonight. Wait, I didn't read that right. Maybe I did, I just didn't process it well. Wow, this lady is really going for the gold. Ha, hey, it would actually be nice to have a night to myself and River, but thanks for the invite. <laughs> uh, Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into a coin slot. <laughs> Damn it, child, you're cock blocking me, <laughs> says Martha angrily as she deals with her child. <laughs> Tiffany, not another arcade machine, I swear, if we have to buy it. Martha storms off towards her kid. She seems nice. <laughs> my, my player character is hilarious. She seems nice. Yeah, the team is one big weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat the tokens. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Phew, I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Only on days like today, I hope. Dad! In unison. She won't let me use the Yamado! <laughs> <coughs> that was a uh, Devil May Cry reference. Because <laughs> uh, I've established that that Whatever. <laughs> Can you help us beat our record on DDR? What's DDR? I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> What's it called? What's that fucking game called? Oh, I was thinking of DOA. <laughs> They're not playing DOA, <laughs> not at that age. We told Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mat. Oh my god, it's Dance Dance Revolution! Yeah! Because <laughs> you know I don't have my jukes anymore. <laughs> dad! Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. Sorry, dudes. Duty calls. We'll catch up in a bit when I finish wrecking these children out of dancing game. It's all good. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. I feel bad for him. I feel like we might be a third wheel here. There's worse places in an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Want to drop some coin on pinball? Do they have a House of the Dead machine? Or Time Crisis? Or the Outrun 2006 machine? Please. Amanda and I pull up to a machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I am a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. And immediately she gets multi-ball, looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good! Patronize me, boomer. <laughs> Just trying to pay a compliment. Amanda shushes me. She's in her pinball zen state. Which time activate? <laughs> she fights valiantly. 
racking up points by the million. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just being able to watch. Your friends are Craig, right? Janet, you and Martha gotta chill your fucking cool your jets. Jesus. Do we we don't even get art for Janet. Uh, she's not important. She doesn't have art. <laughs> we went to college together. Please don't lean on my thing. Huh, that's so interesting. So do you, like, know if he's available? <sighs> Even as a married or ex-married or, like, dad with kids, the Thought Patrol never dies. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I could say. Seriously, you're going to make it till... Because it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it would be great if he... Lady, I swear to God. <laughs> All of a sudden a buzzer sounds and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine till. <laughs> oh, Janet can just fuck right off. Fucking Janet. You stone harpy. What? <laughs> I said I have to go over there and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that'll hurt your feelings. Amanda. Bro! Kind of glitched out there for a second. That might have been I clicked too hard. What's going on? Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda, say quick goodbye to Craig. We head out to the pizza place finally. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. Yeah, what are we doing here? Not at all. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. Although River's just like an entity that's attached to you forever, apparently. <laughs> it's like symbiotic at this point. How are you looking after three kids on your own and managing a softball team? And you're a single dad. That's... Hold up. Craig walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Up for some catch. This might be less catch and more you throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. <laughs> we stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. I have a cooler in my car that we should grab, but there's only juice boxes in there. Man, fatherhood is strange. You're telling me. I can't believe I'm looking back on kickstand Craig days and reminiscing about it. <laughs> so some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal kickstand. It's a feat of discipline, bro. I haven't properly hung out with Craig in so long. I don't even know where to begin. Ask about the business. So you run a business now? Yeah, we sell fitness gear. Yeah, that kind of tracks actually for your character design. Imports and exports mostly, but we're coming up with our own line of athleisure wear soon. I nod. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. <laughs> wow, that that's that's real. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> if you ever need athletic gear, I've got your back. You could sponsor me. I'll wrap your athleisure wear brand while I mow my lawn. That is the glamorous lifestyle we're catering to, yes. Ask about the kids. Ask about coaching softball. That his kids are pretty cool. Kids. I can't believe you're a father of three. Never can I. You know me, I'm an indecisive person. Switch your major four times. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life, but raising kids when Brian and Hazel were born, it's all finally made sense. <laughs> it was like all the time I had spent trying to figure things out led to them. I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. Oh, I had the exact same feeling with Amanda was born. It was the best thing to have ever happened to me. It could be the only thing that ever happened to me, and I'd still be proud of the life I lived. So, he just likes everything I said. I thought I made a right decision, but he just he just wants to talk, okay? <laughs> Did you choose the softball life? I'll admit I was hesitant. 
Brian and Hazel had so much energy that we just had to get them into sports, but no one was there to run the team. The more I did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all of the girls. I worried there'd be a riot if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children, tiny children, tiny children with metal bats. They're quick and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. <laughs> they take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's nice out here, quiet. No screaming children with tiny, tiny metal bats. Must be good to get away from those moms. Christ, Janet. <laughs> I know, right? Put it back in your fucking pants. <laughs> that was a lot. Are they always like that? Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. <coughs> Yikes. Did they, did they forcibly sit on your face? I'm just really not into that life now. <laughs> I did the I did the shit and now I don't want to. But what are you interested in? Peace and quiet. <laughs> That hot, hot silence. <laughs> My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. Hey, this guy's got my vote. <laughs> More seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girls' lives. They've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. <laughs> Buddy, I hear you. The moms can hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. Hit softballs, don't get hit on by moms. The right person will come along eventually. They don't have to. Right person, fuck off. You're doing a good job. <laughs> These kids love you, and to add that, the whole team loves you. I think you got this dad thing down right. Thanks, bro. That means a lot, bro coming from you. I'm distracted, I miss the softball, and it hits me in the face. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right. Nice. Sorry, dude. Craig runs over to me. You okay? Yeah. Wait, let me do the dad thing for the second for a second. Craig spends a moment examining my head. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. This is getting... <laughs> the river is just fucking dumb. She's like, oh yeah, he's pulling this shit, is he? Yeah. Yeah, like he, like he does with all the dudes. You would be so lucky. I mean... <laughs> this is just like, everyone is hitting on everyone all the time, and all the chicks are hitting on each hitting on the guys and the guys are like whatever I want to fuck the other guys man <laughs> I'm just like what the hell how is this relatable <laughs> it's like me working at my school all these girls hitting on you and you're just like whatever man then you end up hanging out with other dudes all the time cause like it's more chill <laughs> like that was planned <laughs> kissing is for the weak what am I, Akuma? <laughs> Feels like I've earned it at this point, waiting all day to hang out with you. Well... Ooh! Party confetti! Walk it off, champ. <laughs> am I feeling hot? Or is that just me? <laughs> River's tired of our bullshit. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired, huh? Hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry things are so... You get older and life just kind of gets in the way, right? There's something quite fun about all the girls hitting on, like... <laughs> like, I'm Craig. And Craig's like, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> like, I've got three kids, they're all daughters, I'm dumb. Like, I'm tapping out of that shit, I'm just gonna raise kids. <laughs> Don't need more kids. <laughs> Got enough shit on my plate. We start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party we went to that got broken up by a helicopter? Whoa. How could I forget? You and me hopped over a concrete wall to get away. 
but the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. Oh yeah! Imagine the look on our faces. <laughs> Just all straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us on about how big of a bust it was. We had to talk to them <laughs> for 30 minutes. We told them you were interested in joining the academy. <laughs> and then they started giving me pointers for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug, or at least as much as we can manage with this sleepy baby between us. <laughs> Always wearing a beanie. Beanie baby. Ever enough time, huh? Guess not. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang soon, yeah? I'd like that. I yawn as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hudged over her collage glue stick in hand. Burning the midnight art oil? Figured I might do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter lip sync battles. Do the sharks lip sync? Or do the shark hunters lip sync? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is good art. Look at this good art you made. Thanks, I'm just about done. Like before is still a lot of dogs. In one corner is a giant pile of cash, in the other it's... Amanda, is that me? Yep, the whole thing is about my goals for the future. And those are basically to just sit on a big pile of money with my 20 dogs and also have a strong and mutually supportive relationship with my father into adulthood. Fair play, man. Oh, now you've done it. Get ready to watch your dad cry. Here it comes. It's happening. Oh. <laughs> she was concerned. You did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Hey, how is your hang with Craig? I cry a lot. <laughs> I wipe a tear from my eye. <laughs> it was good. That Craig guy sure is busy. Yeah, dude, the softball life isn't for quitters. Also, I'm very proud of you for facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world. I should start facing my fears more often. Oh, yeah? How about tomorrow we hit some empty parking lots and uh, practice parallel parking? Baby steps, Dad. I want my way up to it. All right, I'm going to hit the hay. Take care of late night television for me, all right? I'll let them know you said hey. Pet every dog. Yes. Date cop. That was a date? Fate, fisk, girl dad, marijuana, bro, pinball. Oh yeah, S rank Craig. Dad points and daddy points. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I S rank to date. Okay, I'm going to pause it for there, and we'll start up again after I've had a drink. Is it saving? Good. <laughs>